Welcome to the Futurist Public Intellectual. The Supreme Court this week heard oral arguments for two related cases, Moody v. NetChoice and NetChoice v. Paxton. Florida and Texas both passed laws restricting social media companies' ability to moderate their content after these companies deplatformed users and removed posts that violated their content policies in the wake of the COVID pandemic and the January 6 riots. The tech companies retaliated, so now the First Amendment is at stake in one of the most consequential Supreme Court cases of the digital era. While an official decision is expected in the summer, this Supreme Court case is going to tremendously impact all of our lives, especially content creators like myself. We need to examine the tech company's position because we are at a fork in the road. The tech companies contend that, quote, exercising editorial discretion is absolutely necessary to make the websites useful for users and advertisers, end quote. Florida and Texas decry what they see as discrimination, mostly against conservative perspectives. The tech companies want to liken themselves to newspapers, but that's rather disingenuous. When people joined Facebook, they did it because they thought they were going to be keeping in contact with their Facebook friends. That's why every Facebook user sends friend requests. When people joined YouTube, they did it because they wanted to share videos with the world. In neither case did anyone think that they were joining the editorial staffs of Meta and Google. What type of editorial voice do these companies have, and why aren't they explicit about their angles if they want to maintain editorial control? Now, I'm not saying that they have absolutely no power to moderate the content appearing on their platforms. Social media companies still have to abide by other laws, so defamatory or pornographic content have to be addressed in some fashion. But wholesale deletion of posts merely due to the topic or deplatforming people for amorphous content like hate speech is questionable at best. Social media's value is in its network effects, not curation. How can they be an aggregate voice of billions of people? Now that social media has matured, the time has come to declare them common carriers. Trains transport people and goods, no matter what they may be. Phones transmit calls and messages, no matter what they're about. The raison d'etre of social media is the same. They host content, the nature of which is irrelevant. The size and pervasiveness of social media plant them squarely in the common carrier camp. Furthermore, it's important to take into account the difficulty of using or creating an alternative. Since the power of social media comes from their harnessing of network effects, the sheer investment and infrastructure necessary to create a viable alternative are too much the tech companies control the digital public square. So they need to let everyone have access to that public square. Thank you for listening to the Futurist Public Intellectual.